And this might be the first time I put advance notice on my Facebook page that I was doing this. So like people, like my, my friends mm -hmm. may actually know and mock me. You know, they'll, they'll, they'll be aware that I'm on this they'll live. They can mock me live there or they go. can prepare their mocking notes live. Yeah. So by the way, speaking of live, we're, we're live. live. We are live. And usually I don't like actually just show myself or even say anything like during like the, the lead up, but we're early. If you guys can hear me okay, if you can hear this guy, Nathan, okay, yes. let us know. We can check our audio too, because like I set my audio differently than I set him, so hopefully... I'm the difficult one. Yeah, because I, I always um, get on his case about that a little bit, because he either goes like super low or super high, so I kind of have to, to fiddle with his mic a little bit more. Oh, what is up, everyone? What's up, Siggy? I was just talking to, to Siggy earlier. He was. Uh, hey, he's got some. He's got some cool new gears. Audio is good. 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 Mic checks. Check. 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 One. Two. <laughs> and this is a, usually a different mic than um, than what I've been using lately. So I'm always curious to, to go back and rewatch a lot of the stuff because this is, it, is now the, the third different mic that I've used. Is this one different than like November? I think when I was here. No. It's, Actually, usually when I have guests... feels the same. Uh, yeah, I'll go with these lavaliers. Oh. But over there, there's two different mics. One of them is like a, a, a super like, good like Hollywood one, mm -hmm. Hollywood shotgun mic, and the other one is like a really good podcasting slash music one. So like one of them is like, think, um, going all the way back to like Lawrence of Arabia type are those the ones you use to record your voiceovers on the... Uh, oh, like yeah. So lately I've been using the one that, um, that Michael Jackson used to record Thriller. <laughs> <laughs> so I've, I've been all about that one lately. <clears throat> so, so, uh, so Sagi, this is the, the, you know, the uh, Sennheiser a AVXs, which strangely... Um, so th this is, sorry for the, for the tech geekery here, but the AVXs should have some dynamic noise regulation or dynamic volume regulation and i don't think that's happening because like i've i've totally overloaded these mics before uh you so these things here are supposed to be able to like go from whisper to shout no problem like but, it, I, but i kill that sometimes yeah i, I can do it yeah mm. it's, it's weird <clears throat> Uh, Meldium, Nate might be a little low compared to you, Sam. He could be, but like just, I said... Just wait till I get excited, <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, exactly. I'll, I'll turn him up just a little bit, though. We'll, we'll see how this goes. I'm going to turn him up just a little bit. <clears throat> so, this is the SPS live show. This is going to be the first of two this month. Um, I kind of messed up a little bit, guys. So, I pretty much scheduled two live shows this month. And I missed St. Patty's Day. <laughs> oh, you missed your, you could have had a theme. I could have had a theme one. Yeah. So that's, I mean, St. Patty's Day is next weekend, and we're not doing a live show next weekend. So it's going to be this weekend, skipping a week, St. Patty's Day, and then we're going to be doing the one the week after. So there's going to be no drunk shows this entire month. It's okay. We've got some iced tea here. I've got unsweet iced tea to get a little crazy with. I can't get too crazy because my son's sitting over in the corner over there playing Fortnite. We'll talk later. Which of the four game levels do you have them set to? Uh, I didn't realize that that was a thing. We will talk later. <laughs> Did you even read the user's manual? It's German. <laughs> Sennheiser. <clears throat> but no, with this, uh, this uh, SPS live show, we're doing something slightly different, and I'm kind of excited to see what you guys think of it. Because it is, I, didn't, I don't think I even told Nathan about, about this little wrinkle. Yeah, it just made me nervous. So we're doing something different. I'm, I'm used to the routine. Yeah, it's going to be like uh, charades. We, we're going to charade all the corals to you, and you have to guess what they are. Mm. Oh, a shout out to Reef Therapy. What's up, William or Bill or BJ or Will, Bill Jr.? He's the man of many names, depending okay. on which social media you're on. 
three, two, one, and there we go. <clears throat> so hopefully you guys are in the mood for, for SPS. Otherwise, this whole live show is going to be quite alienating to yeah. many of you. They're just here for the banter. Yeah, it's good. It's good. You know, um, I was... I was looking at how many videos that I've shot of your aquarium in the past. And I was thinking, you know, I've shot like what, like it seems like five videos of his, of, of his tank. And I was just thinking, you know, my crowd is probably like really bored of Obviously. seeing Nathan's tank. <laughs> but then I look back, you know when the last video I did of your tank was? That I that I actually published to the channel. Was it like two years ago? It's like three years ago. A lot changes in my tank. Corals grow and grow, and then I yank colonies out. <laughs> so. My viewership changes. Like mm, yeah. like the, the people that I mean, I bet many many of the the people that watch this channel haven't been around for three years. Like that's a long time ago for for like YouTube subscribership even. So it's like you know what it's going to be news to a lot of you guys when I finally do get around to to editing um, his his tank video. So is this what you're talking about? Something new? You're changing the color temperature? Yes. As we, yeah, I've noticed that right away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So check this out, guys. I found out a way that I can um, gradually change uh, the visualization of every single coral to transition from uh, a little bit daylight colored all the way down to close to 20,000 K. So you guys can have like a much better idea of what it looks like under variable lighting. Now because the change happens really subtly over the course of 30 to 35 seconds, um, this is just, uh, well, well, what am I trying to say? I also included just like the the overlay that shows the color temperature, because like if you if you uh, scrub through the footage really quickly, you can you can see the color change as night and day, but it's a lot more subtle watching it happen slowly. But you can get an idea of of different color temps, because again, most people aren't going to be keeping um, their corals under the same type of lighting that we shoot under. It's just not going to happen. So at least this, uh, this shows some variability. Welkin, did you like the heated toilet seats? <laughs> did it surprise you? His, uh, Nathan's, Nathan's son insisted on coming and, and playing Fortnite in the corner. So. Yeah, he wanted to come so he has an excuse to just <laughs> be left alone to play Fortnite. So if the, if the, the feed goes bad, it's because he's chewing up too much bandwidth <laughs> on Fortnite. It happens. So I was, I was my little Fortnite story. So um, I haven't played Fortnite much prior to this, but the, both kids have their switches and it, they, they play Fortnite. So I friended them together, created an account, and I can play with them on, on my computer. So the three of us can play all together, join mm -hmm. up and play together. So we're playing on teams. Um, I, I think 50 on 50 mode, which is much easier for me to handle. And uh, the kids are just all about like finding guns and stuff they're not so much about battling and i'm all about battling so we have a little bit different philosophies there um but there's nothing quite like it a, a change of perspective when you're playing fortnite and your son's saying daddy daddy help me he's shooting at me <laughs> daddy daddy i'm down daddy i'm running out of time daddy help me <laughs> while you're being shot you're like kid i i can only do so much you got yourself in that situation but well, yeah. just, just wait when, when he uh, when he gets to be about like sixteen years old. Oh, and, he'll be just tri just blazing past me, and he's gonna be so disappointed in you. I look forward to that day to where I care. He carries me. Yeah, he'll be like, "Daddy, yeah. I can I can hard carry you, but man, you are so heavy right <laughs> yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. Like, if you could just like not like, why are you dead now? Yeah. How, how did you get killed again? Yeah, we were talking like we're taking turns on deciding where to jump out of the the, the flying school bus onto the map. And uh, after I let them choose like two times, I'm like, no, guys, that's a terrible spot. No, no, never <laughs> mind. We're all, I'm like, I'm jumping. I'm going where I want. I got to survive. It's like, I, I got to take over this. Uh, don't talk about Fortnite. <laughs> yeah, trust us. Like, we are way too old for it. Like, I, I've never played like a, a moment of Fortnite. 
I stopped. I stopped all gaming. Like I even deleted um, the last game app off my phone. Mm. So a Mel DM. I thought six K would look washed out white. It's a lot yellower than that. Like if you've seen uh, what an Iwasaki looks like. Um, <laughs> put your mask on before your child's. <laughs> there you go. If you've seen a, a, what a 6500 Kelvin Iwasaki looks like, it is a very, I mean, it's kind of like that color. Yeah, yeah it's, yellow. it's very yellow. Uh, let's see. Okay, so I'm like, I'm light years behind in terms of comments. So. Yeah, I, I killed it with the... Uh, it's all right, it's all right. Reef therapy, that's actually really good, great change in color times, really gives the buyer a better sense of coral color. Yes and no. Um, it's really difficult to capture color in any way, shape, or form when you're talking about video. So no, I, I appreciate the compliment. Um, I really do. But it is so difficult. So part of it is that like the, the, the camera sensors don't really like aquarium lights to begin with. And so we kind of combat that just by throwing money at the problem. So we use like very expensive cinema cameras and stuff. But the second problem is showing you guys even what I'm seeing. Because the, um, the way that uh, just like data transfer rates go, I only have so much bandwidth that I can send information to you guys. So the camera records at 100 megabits per second which is pretty good. There, there's some that will go even 10 times higher than that. But I, I'm set at about 100 megabits per second. But once I actually produce an output file, it gets crunched down even more. But then when I go to broadcast this, I'm only broadcasting at nine. So you can imagine that going from like 100 megabits per second of information down to nine megabits, you're losing a lot of information like you're losing 90% of, of all that information. And so a lot of times what, what tends to happen is the color looks different or lacks like the, the, the dynamic nature of even what I'm seeing on my screen. It's not what eventually makes it onto YouTube. And then YouTube does its own little thing to even compress it further to, to distribute it. So along the way, <coughs> excuse me, the, uh, the picture gets scrambled quite a lot. So we try to like compensate for that as best we can, but it is really hard to show um, like really good, accurate um, colors. And especially when we start to try to change the color like in real time, that's when like a lot of challenges occur. So I am glad that you guys like the, like the feature because it's not all that easy to do. Uh, let's see. Any, uh, so this is uh, Mujaf. Hello, is there any SPS you can recommend for beginners? Much love from Germany. Um, what do you think? Like, do you, do you think that there's like some, some types of SPS that are easier than others? Uh, Pasilopora, Pasilopora. I think that would be a good beginner. Yeah, I would agree. Some people say bird's nest, but I disagree. Bird's nest, for me, seems to be one of the first ones to get grumpy. We tend to have very good success with bird's nest, but at the same time, I can also imagine things going a little bit sideways kind of quickly with bird's nest. Um, but I, I, would, I would say that's towards the easier end. Basically, anything that's not an acropora, you're looking pretty good. Like a, a stylophora? Stylos, yeah. yeah. I, I would say that's, that's kind of like in the same ballpark as... Um, Okay, I'm going to turn off that. <laughs> That's going to get real annoying. <laughs> turn off, turning off my email. <clears throat> um, so stylos is a good one. Maybe plating montipora. Like not yeah. every montipora, but plating montipora is super easy. Uh, Reefer Lou. What natural method works against acropora red bugs other than a dragon face pipefish? Natural methods. I don't... If you got them... I don't think there's a natural method that's really going to stop them. Yeah, it's been so long since I've had them. <clears throat> um, like we we did have um, the, the dragon face pipefish, and that did do a pretty good job for us. But I think now that there's there are some really effective dips, it's mm -hmm. not so big of an issue. 
dips or the, uh, it's not a natural method, obviously, yeah. but the flea tick medication for dogs. Oh, that's true. Sentinel. Sentinel, yeah. That'll do it. Yes, that that's, once I had them, that's what I used and took care of the problem, for sure. Yeah. I, had a, I had a couple colonies that were had biblical infestations, hmm. and there was I, there was no natural way to keep them. Did down. you ever did you ever lose corals to them though? I like, don't believe so, but the color lo definitely lost color. Definitely lost color. Yes, okay. definitely irritated the co corals to the coloration. I had once purchased a colony from someone, and it, it's funny how. Um, if you're if you're not used to, to looking for it, they're essentially invisible, and this person has like tremendous success with SPS, and I, I, I looked at this coral and I'm like, this thing's absolutely covered in red bugs, and he, and he's just like was oblivious to it. So I I got my camera out mm -hmm. and I like hit that magnification button to like 10x, and sure enough, you can just see them just all over the place like fleas, but. He was so successful just growing Acropora that he was selling off like excess on for for us. Like, it's it didn't seem to affect at least the growth rate. But yeah, I could see it like something like a low level stressor. One of the ones they really like, I think it was the tricolor I had. The one, uh, it's got a. They love the smoother skin Acros. I think they gravitate towards those, and that those are the ones that'll lose their color, just brown out essentially, or go grow okay. drab. But I had a I had a picture in my in my uh, tank thread that it you just see them I had it like magnified in and it's just it's a crazy infestation of them. So how did you get rid of it? Did you used the, uh, Sentinel. Yeah, there's Sentinel and there's another one and I always forget Interceptor. Yes, Interceptor. Yeah, one of the two is what I use. I actually emailed my vet and provided links and documentation to people who have used them for coral parasites mm -hmm. and. Uh, my vet was in, intrigued and prescribed it for us, and uh, I used it and gave the follow-up to the vet. She was very interested. She wanted to know how it worked, and uh, it was very, I mean, it, they're gone, no doubt. That was, uh, that might have been three or four years ago. And I think that the reason why they require um, a prescription from a vet is because um, if you give it to, like, a dog or a cat mm -hmm. for what it's supposed to do, if there's this other condition that the dog or cat might have, um, it'll cause like internal bleeding. I, I think one of the things is if they have worms, yeah. it'll kill the like, worms in their heart. Yeah, and, and, and that will cause like over. lesions. Yeah, yeah, because like the, it's almost like the worms are plugging the holes. And yeah. When the worms die, they just bleed out. Yeah. So I think that that's why they they, requ they require that. But for your aquariums, no, not so much. <laughs> How come McDonald's gets free for product placement? Yeah, actually, um, uh, Rico, the last time he was on, he was like straight up wearing like worldwide coral shirt and a pile blab hat and everything. Like, <laughs> I'm like, and then, like, the thing is, like, that same week I had given him a t shirt for Title Guard. It's like, you're giving every, every other company a, a plug now? <laughs> I don't think you know how this works. <laughs> That's great. <sighs> Delete Facebook, then you know you're an adult. Uh, I wish I could, but if you own a company, you're almost like expected to have a Facebook page. That's kind of like how I communicate with old friends. I think yeah, that's the connection. I've unfriended so many people on Facebook. I, I can't say that's that's something I do. <laughs> no man, it's Facebook Messenger actually, like just groups of people in like a group chat or something like that yeah. and that's just what we use. Uh, All the geriatrics. Yeah, us old people. Yeah, I was gonna say. Yeah, uh, yeah, that, that's Facebook's funny. actually the old person yeah, tool. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Like I think that all the all the young kids are on, <clears throat> what are they on? They're don't on ask a, me. Not on Snapchat anymore. My kids aren't old, don't have access yet to connected devices. We need a Title Gardens franchise near us. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah, just replicate this building somewhere else. Do you think that Saltwater Aquarium has a future? Um, I think it has a better future than the oceans do, if you want to get real dark about it. Like, having been to some oceans lately, it's like, ugh, that is a lot of trash in the water. I haven't had an oil spill in my aquarium yet. Yeah. Yeah. As far as, like, whether there's a, a marketplace for it, um, I don't know. I don't know. 
at some point, I think people are going to get so poor that like it's going to be a really difficult hobby to sustain. Uh, did Parites get renamed for Monty's, like the Sand Dollar or Grinch Parites? Okay, so uh, so right fire, right tire fire, MK. When it comes to like coral names for Parites and Monty's. Um, Sometimes stuff is just straight up mislabeled, and you know we're guilty of that occasionally as well. Um, we tend to name stuff not super scientifically. Uh, we go by what the marketplace calls a particular coral. So uh, there, there are some some corals that I'm pretty sure are not Montipora or not Parietes that we are calling a Montipora or Parietes, like. That's just kind of just what they're known as, and like like uh, I can give you an example of acans and micromusa. All acan lords are really now micromusa lords, but we're in the in the business of selling those corals. So if we if we label them micromusa, it tends to like really tamp down the interest in it because that's not what people are searching for. People are searching for acanthastria or acans. Um, that's probably a bad example because I think they are micros on our site, <laughs> but <laughs> you, you see what I'm saying. Also, uh, there I, I, I need to do a video on this once I actually get the footage. But per, uh, Pavona, Leptoceras, and Samacora, uh, those three corals are really challenging to tell apart. Like there are some corals that you, I just look at them like it could be any one of those three. Like it, it's we sharing. had that discussion with yeah. the, the pumpkin pie coral that I have. Which is officially, uh, uh, as far as the internet is concerned, is a... I don't know. We don't even or, know. No, it doesn't have... Yeah. yeah. The, the so, debate rages. Because if you look at one aspect of it, you look at like their tentacles, it's like, okay. It well, has like many lithophyllin tentacles, but it has a pattern of like a leptoceras, but it also kind of looks like a pavona. Yeah. And, it gets really gray. And I, I've even like sold um, some of what I think is a pavona to like um, another seller, and he just like it's a lepto, it's a or yeah, what I think is a pavona, he will sell as a leptoceras. And then there's leptastria too. Yeah, you just good luck. Le leptastria is easier, but but that's like you know we're talking from you know decades of experience looking at these things, because like some people are just like how can you even tell the difference between like two things that are extremely different, right? Like a Duncan and an Elegance, pretty different. But once you start talking about like Samacora, Leptastria, Leptoceras, Pavona, it's like that gets really challenging. And once you start like shooting it really up close, it gets even more difficult because everything looks the same at yep. that point. Yeah. And, and also just like the, the different little color variants will have like different physical characteristics, not just color. So there's some that like, oh, I look at their tentacles, it looks one way, but the way that the, the, the colony itself breaks up into individual segments is more reminiscent of, of the other genus. So yeah, it's, it's very challenging. Strangely enough, one thing that helps determine um, some of these things is the pests that show up. <laughs> yeah. Like oh oh that doesn't show up on a, yeah it's yeah. like that that's that very specific Montipora eating nudie bronc is on what I thought was a parietes I guess yeah. that's not a parietes because <laughs> it tastes like a Montipora to, to that thing. <clears throat> uh, any Oregon torts on the live stream? No, I don't even think that we have any. Oh yeah, do you have any? Uh, yep, I need to get some. I need to get some. Four twenty reefer, hello. I'm starting a research paper, reef therapy is starting a research paper on coral reefs, and so far my source uh, information is saddening. Oh, yeah, it's, it's kind of a bummer if you actually read some of the, some of those studies. Which zoanthids do you like the most? Do you have a favorite? I don't know if I have a favorite. My favorite that I have are hallucinations. They're the intense orange pattern in the middle and then bright green skirts. Okay. I think but, I saw that when I was when I was over there. Yeah. But, I, I like Utter Chaos. I like Darth Mauls. I like kind of the, the, the paint splattery ones, I think. 
Yeah, Harkins like pests are a pretty good indicator. That'll yeah. help you distinguish. It's like thanks for that. Now now I have to do something about you. So real quick, you might have seen uh, some corals like number number thirty five here that say that there's five available. Those are not going to be what you see is what you get. Obviously, um, they're kind of representative of you know the dozens that we have in inventory. All the other ones that do not have like a multiple associated with them are going to be what you see is what you get. <clears throat> so Jerome Jeffers is asking, I'm having trouble growing my stylo. My tank is low nutrient. Can that be an issue? Absolutely. Yeah. It's becoming uh, better understood that it turns out that like zero nitrate, zero phosphate is really bad for a lot of corals. And um, I know that in your tank, you've, like three years ago when I did a, a tank video of yours, you were running bio pellets, and since then had gone away from that. Yep. And, and I, I know a lot of folks are really still striving for that, that zero phosphate, zero nitrate, low nutrient dream, right? But <laughs> do you know what yours are at right now? Uh, my nitrates are probably around 15 parts per million, and the phosphates are, what is it, 0.1, or probably 0 0.18. 0 0.18. And I know, <coughs> of, me. I know of people that have them higher, and once I finally stopped the bio pellets, I got much better consistent color in acros, and the mushrooms were happier. Zoanthids were so hit and miss. And I, sometimes they would just close up and melt, and I wouldn't know why, but I think I finally realized the pattern was I was adding more bio pellets, and then within a week the zoanthids were taking a hit, or some mm -hmm. of the various mushrooms were taking a hit, and I'd lose some color in the acros. And that's when I was like, you know what, I'm just going to pull these and see what happens. And, um, and then I instituted the automatic water change to make sure nitrates don't get above like 50 or something crazy. For me, I, and some people might have more success with that, but... Um, you know, nitrates anywhere under 25 for me is no, I, not, not taking any action. Mm -hmm. And uh, phosphates I rarely ever test anymore because they were always within uh, a, a small range that was pretty much worry free. And even, and then sometimes I'll be silly and I'll just add a little GFO for no good reason. And that <coughs> GFO is extremely effective at removing phosphates in a matter of hours out of your tank and even just a little bit. So if you do run GFO to try and reduce phosphates, if you think that's the route you're going to go, test your tank before you do it, test your tank four hours later and really watch that GFO. Yeah, some, some people, they, um, they go so hard on GFO because they, they treat it like it's activated carbon. Mm -hmm. It's... But it's, it's much more effective, much faster acting. Yeah, it's very harsh. Whereas, like activated carbon, you really can't OD on activated carbon. Yeah, like, you, you could have like stuff, what you're stripping is not essential to corals' right. nutrient intake. Essentially, but also, um, I think that much. GFO isn't just a phosphate re reducer. It reduces all, all kinds of stuff. Yeah. But the goal is to try to get the phosphate down. If mm -hmm. that is in fact why you're doing it at all, I mean, I don't think that anybody does. Um, GFO for anything other than phosphate, like on purpose. Yeah. So <clears throat> one thing I, I think that a lot of people don't know is what is the deal with nitrate and phosphate? Like when we say that all oh, corals still need that, it turns out that like those are the two things that they cannot get from photosynthesis. Like they absolutely need that in the water or in their diet. Otherwise, it's they, they, if, they're, if they're completely cut off from that source, it could go very, very poorly. So long, long answer. That could be a reason why you're struggling with some of those corals. <clears throat> Possible pores and stylos, what are the differences? That is very challenging to answer. It's one of those things where you get uh, just very used to seeing them and you can just kind of like spot it from like a mile away. It is just familiarity almost. Like yeah. to, to describe it would mean nothing. Yeah. Chunkier. <laughs> Stylophores are chunkier <laughs> and pastelophores seem to have sweepier polyps. 
Yeah, it's it's tough. Um, I did a video on stylos and um, bird bird's nests and pasilopora, and even when you look at them like really up close, they look exactly the same. But when you look when you take like a step back and you look at you know the, the colony as like a, a macro thing, it's it's much easier to to help differentiate. Dosa went crazy. My elk is at 20 now. Wow. Yeah, oh, that's not good. Yeah. <clears throat> yep. Bring it down. Yep. Yeah, it's pretty Slowly, much all you can yeah. do. Yeah. So real quick, um, okay, so somebody was asking, like, who's this guy at all? So Nathan is a <laughs> no, really, really. longtime friend, uh, local hobbyist. He has a very, very nice tank. If you want to see what his tank looked like three years ago, you can check out um, some of the videos that I did like in the past. Basically, I started shooting his tank when he first just started getting, uh, getting it put together. And then um, every couple of years, I would go back and take another look. So his tank has been mature for a very, very long time to the point where there might have been just like wholesale changes in corals and it looks like packed all the time. Just because you know, he sells a lot of stuff out of his aquarium, and uh, yeah, he definitely um, knows what the heck he's doing. And you know, who knows? Like maybe in the next couple of years, here you might be looking at getting an even larger aquarium. Because right now, your show tank is how big? It's six foot by thirty inches front to back and twenty two inches high. In fact, I just sent out uh, a request for a quote. Nice. And uh, at first I was thinking about doing 10 foot long tank, but mm -hmm. if I move the current display tank to the wall I want to and then replace it with a new tank, I can only go nine feet. So Only nine feet, guys. Yeah. So These are the problems that you run into when you, when you uh, actually want a big tank. Like when you measure out what nine or 10 feet actually looks like in a room, it's like, oh my God. No, it, I would have gone, I'd go 10 feet, but it would be too close to the other tank. I mean, it also gets to the point where it's like, Okay, so sure, it can fit in that space that you measured out, but can you turn a corner to get it into that room? Can you get it down a staircase? Can you do all kinds of stuff? It yeah. becomes like a really big challenge. Uh, Decanthus Reef, thank you for posting the uh, the Eventbrite info for the summer barbecue. Um, we I talked to you about that, right? I know of it, yes. Okay, so on the 27th of July, um, we're having a little get together here. If you'd like to buy tickets, if you're local or willing to travel, um, you can you can check out that link right there and join us. We should have a good little cast of characters. <laughs> uh, Victor, some of my SPS corals are turning brown. What do you think? Could it be light or something else? If it's turning brown, that's kind of like a general stress response. It could be anything. It's yeah, it could... less likely to be light though, I think. It's funny because too, me too much nutrients and too little nutrients can turn it brown. So mm -hmm. you, you get an idea if you Could test your pests. water. Pests, yeah. It's basically just not happy. Strangely, I think light has less to do with it in that situation unless you're running a very dim aquarium. Yeah, too little light would probably cause them to darken to the brown color, but. Yeah, Harkins is like, Victor, there's a hundred possible problems. Unfortunately with, with uh, with SPS, it can be that way, especially um, especially with Acropora. Like those yeah. those things can can and change even, dramatically. Even just ran, random or significant changes in water chemistry, if it's alkalinity or calcium, something, uh, they'll the Acropora will tend to just lose color, and they're you know then they look brown. They don't necessarily bleach, but they they lose their best colorations, and I've noticed that with um, elk swings. If, mm -hmm. if you have an elk swing, you, I'll lose some of the best colors out of the Acropora. So the other thing to consider also is like seasonality changes and how that affects the your your house and where the tank is located. So for example, in wintertime where your house is kind of like shuttered up a lot more, you might be experiencing lower pH numbers uh, just because there's less gas exchange that's going on, um, and that can kind of cause stuff to brown out, uh, meaning that. The, the pH goes down. And I know that we had talked briefly about, about that, but like lower pH values also kind of inhibits the coral's ability to, to uptake alkalinity. And so that can, 
throw off some, some things in the balance. But conversely, in the summertime, when you have stuff more open, you can introduce stuff like pollen. And pollen just getting into your tank can throw off nutrient levels as well. And that can cause like weird fluctuations in coral coloration from different seasons. <clears throat> So they're talking about Harkins' issue with uh, getting his alkalinity spiked. And describe real quick how you handle calcium and alkalinity in your tank, because you do it very differently than, than how I do it here. I run, so I'm, I make, mix up the solutions and run the two-part solutions uh, do, with dosing pumps that are uh, connected to my apex, which I basically program a timer into them. And uh, that's how I dose. So which, which two part are you currently using? I'm using the bulk reef supply dry mix. Shout and, out to BRS real quick. Yes. <laughs> well, yeah. Um, they get some free publicity yeah. <laughs> because they need it, right? Feel free to send me some two part. <laughs> I use a lot. <laughs> um, and then I, I since implemented the Alcatronic, which just measures my alkalinity. And if in the case that I have a dip in it, it will dose and make the adjustment to bring my alkalinity back into a set parameter I've set. So I've, I had it between like 8.2 and 8.7, but recently uh, I, I bumped it up to closer to nine, my alkalinity levels. And I've also instituted a CO2 scrubber to raise pH in an attempt to encourage uh, faster growth. So. So there's a, there's a lot going on there. Yeah, I gave you a lot of info. When... <clears throat> so real quick, thank you for 20 reefer. Appreciate the ten dollars, ten dollar super chat. Um, so going back one step. So with the well, so, well since uh, let's go back with just what you said. What is a CO2 scrubber? So it's basically like a, a it's a reactor that just pulls air into it. So there's not there's no water involved. You pour it, pull air into it that is then fed into your um, skimmer. So the air intake on your skimmer. Yes. So your skimmer is actually powering it, pulling the air into it. <clears throat> and it kind of looks like, uh, like, an RO unit reactor or yeah. like the dual reactors that you get from for GFO and carbon. Right. So it's essentially the same thing. And people people have made their own. You just need a device or a container for the media that will pull air in, and uh, what it does is remove CO two uh, from the air, providing more oxygen rich. Input into the aquarium water, so it's kind of like a uh, like a some type of lime media, I believe. Exactly, they, they lime said. soda, I believe they call it. So, and <clears throat> so basically, uh, what it's doing is by having a higher oxygen levels or lower CO two levels in your um, aquarium water, that raises raises the pH levels. Yeah, because that's the first time I've ever seen. It. I've seen people uh, direct. Uh, air from outside the, the the building. Yep. Into their air intake on their skimmer to like get kind of like that that fresh air thing going on. Believing that the the air outside is more oxygen rich or less CO two levels right. than the air in your house, which is most likely true. But I've also heard that like if the um, if the skimmer isn't like big enough, it's not really sucking in enough air to make any difference. Yeah, the longer the line that you're using, also. Really? Oh, I see what you're saying. It, that yeah, the, the, yeah. The, the the suction of air into there is like mm -hmm. it's not mixing enough air to like really make a difference. Yeah. So like one guy that I that I knew like his his uh, pH in, in in his tank water was like what I was running my calcium reactors at at one point. Bait was it in the basement. <clears throat> it was a basement system. Yeah. And so he was really struggling with that. So in that in that situation, I think that like um, an oxygen reactor is that what that's called? Oxygen CO two scrubber. CO two scrubber would um, would help out a lot. So it's cl it's clearly I I have the graph on that I've put like in a, my tank threads and stuff. But you you can clearly see the raise in the pH levels both mm -hmm. the low and the high throughout the day because <laughs> it, it does fluctuate throughout the day. Um, but it definitely has an effect, so that's for sure. And again, the, the reason why you kind of want to, to look for a pH right around like 8.3 is that I guess there is this connection between uh, that pH range 
and uh, faster uptake of the bioavailable calcium and alkalinity in the water. So if you are looking for like dramatic SPS growth, like and, and you're not achieving kind of like your expectations, like the just the pH level might have an effect on that. And um, it was I, I with the alkaltronic always measure, measuring alkalinity levels every eight hours. Um, as soon as I instituted that CO two scrubber, it was apparent that alkalinity uptake went up. I had to dose more and more. I had to continually over the next few days adjust my dosing schedule up because it was using more alkaline. The tank was. So it was clear something was going on in using the elk. So before we get into the alkatronic portion of your uh, calcium and alkalinity control, um, you're, you're, so you're dosing the two part and you're not dosing magnesium, but you incorporated magnesium into your continuous water change system. Correct. So just for the two part, did you just kind of have to experiment with how much per day you were, um, you were having dosed? Yeah, I mean, yeah, just from just measuring. Much, just figuring it yeah, out. Yeah, over, over the, like if you really test every day for the, over the course of a week to two weeks mm -hmm. and adjust minute by minute how much you're dosing, you, you'll, you'll narrow it in pretty good. Because and then you, you test periodically after that, especially if you're adding corals or your corals are growing because your demand will go up. Yeah, because I think that sometimes people get fixated too much on the size of their aquarium rather than looking at their bio load because you could have a 500-gallon tank, but if it's very sparsely populated with coral, you don't need to be dosing it like a 500-gallon tank full of Acropora yeah. or full of parietes or And whatever. I have a very high concentration of coral per gallon or yeah. per water volume right yeah. now and so my demand is very high but somebody you know even well when my tank was a year old there was not nearly the demand mm -hmm. okay so then let's get to the alkatronic i think that a lot of times people get a little bit um, worried about over automating their aquarium and so the alkatronic can you kind of describe like what that device is doing like really quickly. So the Alcatronic's pulling water out of my aquarium and testing it with a reagent solution and a pH probe and through its measuring system every eight hours it will give me a reading of my elk level in my aquarium. It, I can program it with a set range that I want my aquarium to be and if, if um, the alkalinity level is below my programmed range uh, the Alcatronic actually has a dosing pump built in that it will dose some alkalinity solution to bring my elk back up and then it'll test the two hours later to see if I've gotten back within range and uh, go that way. But it's not my primary source of dosing alkalinity. It's just kind of a supplemental, hey, you're too low, here's, a, here's an extra little boost. Do you have that capped? Like that, like how much it can correct? Uh, yes. So. You program it into your, you, they have an algorithm built in, so I say what my tank volume is, and so then it is careful about how much it doses. It calculates it out and doses a certain amount based on what I've told my tank volume is. And then it'll test two hours later. If it's within range, great. It'll test eight hours later. You can program the testing interval anywhere from every two hours to every 12 hours. I had it testing every two hours when I first set it up, then four hours. And now I'm to the eight hour interval and I like that level. So I think I'll keep it there. Because a concern that I think that people would have is what if there's just like a bad test? Like it just simply got a wrong number somehow. So if it does a reading and it's way off from a previous re the previous reading, mm -hmm. it will automatically retest right there. So okay. it doesn't do anything. It retests a consecutive test right away. And then uh, it, if it's still... It actually will continue testing until it has similar results at the same time. Oh, okay. So, you know, if it says, okay, wow, it's really low all of a sudden, it'll retest to confirm it or, you know, make sure that it... And just so you know, we're not getting sponsored by Alcatronic or anything like no, that. No. Gen I'm, I'm genuinely interested in this device if I want to use it in my systems. Because, like, a, a nightmare scenario for me would be... <clears throat> Uh, this thing just gets a wrong test value. It says, oh, your alkalinity went from five or whatever my low alk systems are typically are to, uh, to like 
one. Like, so, so that's something impossible, right? Mm -hmm. And so we need to like instantly raise a whole bunch of alkalinity. So here we go, and just, just start and what going you, crazy. And what you can do, like I had to learn to, te or learn to trust the machine. Uh -huh. Like, yeah, I wasn't, originally I did not have it doing that supplemental dose. You can, t you know, you can have it not take action is what it's called, mm -hmm. um, and just kind of get a feel for it. And then over time, you'll see how accurate its testing is and, you mm -hmm. know, and then. That's interesting. And then even if you do want it to supplement, you could always tell you have a tell it you have a smaller volume of water so that when it does supplement, it's not at full strength. Yeah. So there's a lot of it actually has a lot of uh, flexibility and it can do more than I even use it for. But uh, it's it's very interesting and it's been very extremely helpful in keeping my alkalinity rock solid. So. And which has then translated into better colors in the acropores for certain. Uh, and my litmus test is the uh, home wrecker acro with the pinks in it. If I had a, a large fluctuation in alkalinity, the pinks are gone for a month, month and a half. So hmm. that there's other things that play with that coral, but um, that one's kind of hard to keep the pink in. Having seen yours in person was the first time I've seen that coral not look like total garbage. Yeah, well, like I said, it's it's a fussy coral. <laughs> like if you guys like, uh, so like a home wrecker, and that, and and I would say that's not even the peak coloration that I've seen other people in person with. Okay. So, because usually, like if you look online and see a whole bunch of uh, different pictures of like uh, of that acro, I mean, some of it might be. Um, Doctored. <laughs> yes, that one's. It's tough to get a picture of it, and then it's also. It, some people get carried away trying to give it its good color, and yeah, because they paid so much money for it. Like yeah, no, nobody wants to be yeah. like, oh, I bought this thing for like five hundred dollars. It looks so, like trash. I better make it look like not trash when I post a picture of it, sort of thing. To be fair, when that first came out, um, I saw it in person, and it it had just fantastic color and uh, a frag of it in person, and uh, it. Um, it originally took a lot of flack, the pictures that first came out with it, but in person it was pretty much dead on to the, those hmm. colors. So That's cool. I think a lot of people have trouble replicating those colors and then they couldn't believe them and so they get angry or call them, you know, say it's photoshopped, but... Yeah, I, I, like I, I saw one like relatively recently, not in your tank, but I looked at that and like that looks like... It, like now you can you can if you that make looks it like every other acro. Yeah, if you make it unhappy, it's going to have greens and some dull purples. Yeah, and that was it. Almost no pinks. It's like I I have a tank full of acros that look like that that I want to give away for like five dollars, like sort of thing. <laughs> yeah, that's just a that's just a greenish tenuous with like some purple on it. Yeah, some it's like we call those. Purple. Yeah, we call those regular old acros around <laughs> here. No, but but then again, there are these like these little subtleties to to bring out. Mm -hmm. uh, bring out coloration. I think that's why I think that people uh, that, that are experienced hobbyists sometimes do gravitate to Acropora because it is a challenge. That's uh, true. Because yeah. there's other there, there, there's there's not a whole lot of other redeeming qualities to that coral if you really think about it. It doesn't have a ton of motion or anything like that. There's not these wavy tentacles. It's just fuzzy sticks. That hey, look, just... hey, this is an SPS show. Let's not let's not let's not hate on the acros. Yeah. I don't know why you guys buy this stuff. <laughs> no, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. <clears throat> I, I'm expecting a just top of the line acro selection once they're set up in yeah, this building. Uh, yeah, that, that's kind of, that's kind of well, here's where the thing, you like, have control over every variable. What's going to be really funny is if, because right now at the greenhouse, we're getting like fantastic coloration, like absolutely this amazing um, growth and color out of the greenhouse. And <laughs> give it two months, three months. Well, I was just thinking, like, what if the secret sauce was the greenhouse? <laughs> so when, <laughs> yeah. well, so we we build this like wonderful new building. We have these like amazing custom aquariums coming in. We're going like you know really top top end on lighting. Right when you figured out everything perfect for the everything greenhouse, everything is like this rock <laughs> rock solid parameters. And you know what we have? We have some average looking home record <laughs> acros. <laughs> It's like those look like trash. Mm -hmm. However, in this greenhouse, everything looks amazing. It will be fun to see which one, which corals like the varying environments between the greenhouse and this building. Uh, let's see, where were we in the chats? 
Uh, Thershawn, numbers 66 through 76 not available. Uh, if the number just vanishes, it means that somebody else bought it. So it is, it is entirely possible. See, I don't even know how many people are on. They're flying off the shelves, folks. Get them while they're hot. <laughs> It, it, it don't can, hesitate. It can be kind of competitive. Jump that forward way. and buy number one hundred. I don't know. We haven't shown it on the video, but <laughs> uh, Harkins and Clarks. I'll buy one hundred of the five dollar acros. You have a deal. <laughs> you have a deal. They don't, they, they don't look bad. They don't. There's just a lot of them, and they're just green and blue, and purplish. Um, so it's funny that you say that, like as far as like buying ahead, because I have had people buy the day before, meaning that it's all sight unseen. And then, I'm, and then I will email them, like, just so you know, just in case you were watching a past live show and thought it was this live show. No, I'm just getting the jump on it. So does it say like number 79? Uh, what is that? Amarillo? It'll just say number 79. <laughs> it doesn't even have a description. Doesn't, it doesn't even, no description. <laughs> number 79 in price. Yeah. 40 bucks, I'll take that. Number seven, so 79 is only 40. I, I double checked, and this person says, "No, I'm just doing it to 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 uh, to support the show, and I just like to be surprised." I'm like, "Okie dokie, awesome." Like I would understand it because sometimes we do, we uh, occasionally will put like a super cheap uh, coral, like maybe like between one to five dollars, like really cheap. And so some people just take a flyer on that, but this particular person wasn't taking a flyer on those. Yeah, it was it's like thirty, forty dollar here and there. <clears throat> I'll call you when the new tanks are up. Yes, yes, do so, because I, I will I will hook you up with with uh, with those acros for sure. Welcome, how's Fortnite? You still playing Fortnite? Yeah. All right. What? Oh, you're playing creative? Yeah. Yeah. This kid's still playing Fortnite over there. He's 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 been really good. He hasn't made a, made a peep. You guys probably didn't even know that that his son was in the same room here. So yeah, as far as like um, as the equipment side of things is what I'm planning on doing. Like, I, I'm a big calcium reactor guy, so I'm going to be doing. Um, I'm not going to be doing continuous water changes, but <clears throat> we've set up a system where we can very very easily do siphoning or whatever kind of maintenance we want, and then quickly top off with fresh salt water. So it's kind of like a a small micro water change consistently thing. And then on top of that, we're going to be running calcium reactors. And then um, I'm considering doing the Alcatronic thing. Is there a setting on the Alcatronic that allows you to just do all your dosing rather than having like a separate two-part dosing system? No, not just the Alcatronic, but they, they're releasing a the dosatronic, which is a dosing pump, I don't know if it has three or four dosing pumps built into it, that communicates with the Alcatronic, and then... So wait, so first of all, why can't the Alcatronic do it? It only has one dosing pump, and that's just kind of like the supplemental dosing pump of alkalinity. And it only does alk? Correct. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. For some reason, I thought it might have tweaked with alkalinity and calcium. No, it's just... Uh, just like kind of the backup alk is all it does. Okay, interesting. But if I understand correctly, the dosatronic that's coming out is basically a dosing pump, and it will dose in the ratio. Uh, so it will still only test alkalinity, but it'll dose your calcium alkalinity, and if you wanted to dose magnesium, it'll dose that in the ratio that is considered standard consumption. Okay. Which is interesting because it, it, it seems like I have to dose a lot more alkalinity than the standard ratio. Mm -hmm. But maybe you can adjust that in the programming or settings to say. Yeah, yeah. That could be interesting. Yeah. Because we, we, um, we have some, some systems here that have chronically low alkalinity. And uh, the calcium levels and magnesium levels are fine. But it's really just that alkalinity figure that, that's, really, that's really lacking. So... It's kind of why I'm, why I'm kind of interested in um, doing something supplemental because our systems are um, so large that large calcium reactors kind of struggle with keeping up with it, especially once we get like insane growth on, on some of like the really fast growing stuff like Pasilipora and Bird's Nest. <clears throat> uh, Chuck, 
Admire and Than, I got my order from last live show and the frags look awesome. Thank you, thank you. Uh, I'm really glad that you got your order because <laughs> we actually had um, an entire day where every single box we sent never got out of Cleveland. Oh. So I learned a couple things. So I learned that um, A, we should check on that to make sure that the plane leaves because there was like engine difficulty or something at UPS, right? But then the next morning when we did discover that, so there's like, I don't, I don't even know how many boxes there were, but I was like contacting my rep. I'm like, hey, can I just go to the airport and pick this up? Because otherwise it's going to stay on that plane. They're doomed. Until like 9 p.m. when the plane actually leaves. So I'm here like at 10 in the morning and I'm like saying, hey, I want to go get those boxes, bring them back, and I'll just resend them later. Right? Because it's even if I have to eat shipping on all those boxes, I don't even care. I just need to go get those boxes. Right? Turns out that once they load it onto that plane, it gets sealed by the FAA. So nothing is coming off of that plane. Mm. And so like at that point, it's going to be 48 hours plus in the winter before those corals are going to see another tank. We had some losses, let's just say. But strangely, we had some not losses, which is like, I would not have expected that. Yeah. I thought, oh, we're total loss. <laughs> yeah. So yes, I, so I'm very glad that you did get your get your corals safely. That was like a crazy situation. Like, you know, when you, when you send off a box to any shipper, it's like you kind of expect them to, to ship it. It's kind yeah, of like part of the deal. That's, yeah, that's part of the contract. <laughs> so <clears throat> when you have your rep, do you find that there's a high turnover of reps or do you have like kind of a long-term one? So Just curious. this particular, okay. Reps are, I, I used to be on, on FedEx. And we had this great, great rep. She was amazing. Like if I had an issue at 10 in the morning, she would be resolving it by noon. She got promoted and replaced by somebody else that was not quite as good. And then we had some other like compounding issues. So I ended up leaving FedEx and got UPS. This UPS rep is like absolutely amazing. Like if I have a problem, there's a good chance that within an hour he's going to be in front of me like in person, like it, it, it's really quite impressive. And how they handled this past round of like mess ups with that whole um, plane thing, it's been, it's been good. A much bigger uh, organization than me uh, just recently switched from UPS back to FedEx because their rep like quit, didn't tell anybody, and UPS didn't give him another rep immediately mm -hmm. and then raised his prices so he was like really unhappy and he's like I'm leaving because because I like your service better like he was getting better actual service from uh, from the actual delivery part of it but because of this little screw-up it's like by switching back to FedEx even with the higher degree of screw-ups I'll save a hundred thousand dollars a year Based in on doing your new so. pricing, yeah. yeah so it, it totally depends. It, like the, the shipping aspect of this is it's such a difficult obstacle and, and it's a much bigger obstacle now, especially because they, cause I think that all the different carriers, they all blanket raised their prices 5% this past year. So if you guys uh, really want to get over on shipping, get to the free shipping threshold. I cannot encourage that enough. It is very expensive. Like if you think that $39.99 is a crushing amount, Believe me, I am, I am personally paying way more than that to get you a box. So if you don't want to be paying $39.99 in shipping, go for the $250. Just keep adding the corals. It's, it's really worth it just to get above that threshold. <clears throat> Glad Than switched to UPS. My local UPS driver is pretty hot. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There you go. I'm actually pretty happy with my UPS driver that, that comes here, but it's not because he's really hot. <laughs> it's because he's very punctual and yeah, professional. Quality, yeah. And that's another thing that that's also strange about um, about drivers and stuff. Like the the two drivers that we would occasionally get for FedEx could not be more different. Like one guy was like very very rough with the boxes. Another guy literally had white gloves on. 
<laughs> it was like the most like you know delicate white glove white treatment glove. that we were getting. And it's like, why couldn't you be a normal guy all the time? This <laughs> other guy is like just chucks it in the back of the truck, just drives off. You can just hear it as it's leaving. All of my boxes toppling over. Anyway. I had a cup. I good. I'd always not that I ship that often, but I've shipped corals in the past, and I always do it through FedEx, and I drop it off at the airport actually because I don't live that far away. Anyways, um, and I had good experiences, and then this uh, it was probably nine months ago now. Um, I shipped a couple, three boxes. Two of them were t completely crushed by the time they got to where they were going and leaked. And the corals actually survived, but mm -hmm. the one, the, the cardboard the cardboard box, the, the lid was off, the cooler lid was missing. I was like, I don't know what they did. did. What, they, they ran like through it with a forklift. Yes, something. yeah, exactly. It was just like, oh my Whoa. God. Fortunately, the corals lived, but like the one guy just, it was delivered, <laughs> just like soggy mess. Yeah, that it, it's so frustrating. It's now so I'm like, I don't know if I want to ship anymore. No, shipping I'm is... Scared. Yeah, and sometimes like um, occasionally we ship like a very uh, large order, and like as we're handing it to like the UPS guys, like you understand this is a car. Yeah, there's okay? a lot on the line with this one. <laughs> it's like if you if if you're gonna mess one up, Not this don't one. mess this one yeah, up. Yeah. This one's gonna hurt. Yeah. Uh, Joel. Uh, Joey Merrill, I skipped ahead and bought 100. It better be a good one. <laughs> I don't know what it is. <laughs> good We're luck. We're almost there. Good luck. <laughs> the moment of truth is coming. What's the difference between Forest Fire dig Digi and Bubblegum Digis? Uh, they're very similar. I think that the Bubblegum has a little bit of green in its on its base. Yeah, they're just two different color variants, but they are very similar in that they have like red polyps. Um, and it also depends on on how they're grown also. Like you're gonna get a lot of uh, a lot of color variation. Dan's chugging whiskey again. Golden Peak whiskey. A golden Peak <laughs> green tea whiskey. <clears throat> so uh, I stopped on the way down and got two large unsweet iced teas from McDonald's. Best deal in town, one dollar. Not to keep plugging McDonald's, but it was a buck. They're a buck each. Um, but uh, at a frag swap uh, I got up early in the morning and my daughter was with me, so we stopped to get McDonald's for breakfast. And I ended up, I was like, well, I'm going to be there like all day. So I ended up getting five unsweet iced teas. <laughs> so I had my cooler of corals oh, and my, no. my five unsweet iced teas right next to it. It was a good day. It was a good day. That's like a, a bladder stretcher. Uh, yeah, <laughs> there are numerous trips, but... The meteor showers. Meteor showers are doing really well. Uh, so for Cyphastria, um, like I think that that we've experienced the the best growth ever when you just provide like the lowest possible light. I mean, we we have like one tank now that there's like a patch of it just growing, like on the on the bottom, like bare bottom, and it's to the point where we're just like putting other racks of coral right on top of it, and it just doesn't That's care. Fine. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah, it's fine. We're just going to extend a little bit more. My bubblegum Monty, I'm presuming, has green tips. Yeah. I don't really have one, so I'm not really sure what they even look like. I just thought that they... I, I, had, a, I had a picture in my head. I don't know what they look like. <clears throat> off the top of my head either. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to Google that real quick. Bubblegum Monty. Really? My bubblegum has green tips. It looks like, oh, green tips. Okay, cool, cool. So what I'm seeing Not is, the polyps. Not the, the polyps. It looks similar to a forest fire, right? It looks really similar to a forest fire. If I was just to point out any difference that I might see, it's that you're seeing the green tips, but the rest towards like the bottom is gonna be like a bluer base with those same orange polyps. Because if you look at, <clears throat> watch, I'm gonna like look for um, forest fire. Forest fire. It's gonna be the, the same, same picture. Same exact same <laughs> it's the same thing. It's really close. It's really close. 
and, and, and it is like mostly the same pictures. Except that, that, that one is, yeah. Yeah, except that mine, my, my picture just happened to show up along with it. It's really close, guys. Oh, what was number 100? I didn't see. Oh, we passed it. We did. Uh, let's see. We can, we can rewind, rewind it on here. You got a green branching postulopora. <laughs> there you go. <clears throat> oh, man. Yeah, it's nearly the same. Yeah. I mean, I, I know that some people get really bent out of shape when... Um, when you're talking about certain named corals. Um, but there's, again, there's, there's like so much weird overlap. Like for example, um, oh, what is it called? It's, it's a type of Acropora. Um, it's mostly like yellow with a purple base. Of course, that description does not help anybody. But I think it's called like a Pink Floyd. Oh, yeah, Pink Floyd, yeah. Okay, so. We have one that we're calling like an Amarillo or Amarillo, and it actually looks closer to a Pink Floyd. And every single time anybody comes over here and, and asks about that, it's like, how much is that Pink Floyd? But ours is like more purple than it is yellow, whereas the, the, the pictures I see online are more yellow than it is purple. And I hesitate to call it the Pink Floyd because I think that'll like get people like all bent out of shape about any slightest thing, when in reality, it probably is. They're gonna it's ask just, you a lineage, and you're like, I don't have any, then you can't call it a Pink Floyd. Yeah, but by it, the way, anytime that anybody asks you for lineage, that's like, that, <laughs> is, that is an instant, just conversation's over. It starts and stops in the greenhouse. Yeah, yeah, that, that, that conversation is gonna go no place. Well, because even, even if when you do get like stuff that you know came from the source that they're looking for, yeah. It can still look wildly different. It just does not matter. Oh yeah, like like a home wrecker acro or any of these. Like I've been banging on this home wrecker acro this whole show. It doesn't look that good. What just happened there? Well, whatever. So we are coming close to the end. I forget exactly how many, um, how many corals are on this particular live show. I think it was like 120 something. <clears throat> what is the minimum for free shipping? So tactical boomerism, 250. Is Than shorter than Nate, or are the chairs different heights? Chairs are different heights. I think we're close to the same height though. Yeah, I would. I don't. Yeah, we're both about six feet tall. Tune in next time to find out. Uh, so tactical, if you add a, to cart, can someone still buy them out from under you? Yes. So Aaron, thanks, thanks for, uh, for looking out. Um, so yeah, placing multiple orders is perfectly acceptable. Um, in fact, we kind of encourage it during the show uh, because just putting it in your shopping cart doesn't actually reserve it for you. Um, you have to be like fully checked out in order to, to get it. Would rather have a WD than well, a home record. Walt, Walt Disney. Disney. I Walt do have a Walt Disney. Disney in the tank as well. So guys, I, so I, I hate to make promises on when videos are going to get done. I was actually hoping to get his video done before this live show, so like um, you guys could see uh, like how good his tank looks. Um, a lot of times, it, it's when I, whenever I go. Um, it, to, to a tank, it, it's difficult sometimes to like capture how good it looks. And this time, I'm like super happy with the footage. So, how did the really... frag tank? Did that have a good it lighting? It pretty good. Yeah, pretty good. Was there something different that you did? No, it was just a different time. Uh, time of day. Yeah, where it was whiter, than not as vi however that violet shows up, yeah. which I've found photograph in the tank also. Uh, yeah. It's tough sometimes, the, the frag tank. Yeah, like so he's using um, an Orphic Atlantic over his frag tank, and that is a notoriously difficult LED fixture to shoot under. 
Yeah, it gives off this <clears> weird <throat> violet color under certain settings. So yeah. real quick, David Hulcherman, can you please describe the mystery packages? Uh, the mystery boxes are essentially like a volume discount, but it is our choice. So uh, there's, the, there's like an SPS mystery box. There is a Zoanthid mystery box, stuff like that. And I think that there's just like a, a giant like 50 coral mystery box. And so when you like look at the per price um, of, the, of those mystery boxes versus uh, kind of a, the a la carte shopping, it's, um, it's a lot less expensive. So that's usually for people uh, that are either just feeling lucky or um, like stores that are looking for like a quick boost of inventory from our stock and they just want to get like a, like a selection at a price that they can resell at. So there's a bunch of different motivations, but that's one way that, um, that people can go about shopping. We actually did sell a 50 pack recently. So I'm like, that's going to be fun to ship. <laughs> <laughs> Any idea what my Monte, Monte cap might be? It's super light pink. A bleached orange one? It could just be a bleached <laughs> orange one, yeah. It could be. Ah, gosh. Is it a, a, a plating Monty cap and not an encrusting one? And it's pink. Again, am I, if, it's, if that's the case, it might be a bleached one. Yeah. And <clears throat> there's not too many things that, that bother them to, to really stress them out or anything like that. I guess like nudie bronx, but that wouldn't be light pink. That'd just be like... Kind of white patches of white, yeah. <laughs> eating away flesh. Uh, Brian, I do not ship to Europe. I'm sorry. This is uh, U.S. only. Yeah, and, and the, the thing about like uh, about the, those type of really fast growing plating monties, it almost like doesn't matter. It'll eventually kind of like settle in. They almost rarely ever just crash, crash that I've seen. You know, like Walt Disney versus Homewrecker. <clears throat> what does that look like? Oh, okay. That's kind of interesting. I don't remember seeing that in your tank, so it must be looking very average. <laughs> yeah, it does. You know, I've not seen one in person with, like, that color polyp. Yeah. And that almost makes me think somebody took a picture with, like, an orange filter. Yeah, that's okay. So, guys, I, I, I'm surprised that I, I hadn't brought it up until. Like, I'm, I'm now. bothered by the orange filters when it's clear that it's I'm, you're yeah. getting these orange colors, and it's like, well, that's got to be an orange filter. Yeah. So the orange filter is a way to like circumvent the fact that um, a, like a phone camera's um, image sensor like hates that color, like that that, that blue, blue yeah. that blue color. So it can strip out like a lot of that blue coloration, and so you can at least see, right? But it, it introduces this absolute garbage, like orange color into everything. I mean, it looks awesome, but it's not true to life. Y it'll never be You'll, like that. Yeah, nothing yeah. shows up that nothing, orange. Nothing's yeah. like that. So I think that sometimes like... That's more accurate. Mine actually, okay. nah, mine looks nice. That's not a great, that yeah, that's not a great picture, I guess, but it's closer than that other one. <laughs> yeah. So it's, it's almost like there, there's, so pe I, I think the orange filter is for us what like Photoshop was, or no. Bad Photoshop. Yeah. Abuse. So, yeah, it, it, can, it can definitely be abused. Because it was such a recent thing that I, I remember seeing somebody um, was doing like a live stream and um, his... His tank just looked incredible. Like, I was like, how, what kind of like, uh, like lobophilia is that? I mean, it is just like, uh, like a fluorescent yellow looking thing. And it's not. It's just because of the orange filter. I'm just, I yes. was so unused, unused to seeing that. That like, because now like when you see bad Photoshop, you can like, oh, I get it. Yes. I, I know what that's going to look like yep. in real life. Yep. But I, I don't have that similar and, yeah, flavor for the Yeah, you have to make that yet. mental adjustment for those orange filters. And, and now people are asking me, it's like, what filters do you use to shoot your corals? I'm like, none, because that's garbage. But, <laughs> but I can understand if you have like a phone that like shoots a big blue blob under your aquarium lights, that you need something. 
and that's like your that's like your only camera, right? Yeah, yeah. You're not going to run out and buy like a really nice DSLR or buy a cinema camera that has like a professional image sensor. So I get that, but boy, it does a disservice sometimes when you're trying to like represent color, or especially when you try to start selling stuff. It's like that's yeah. when it's like. Not, like not it, super awesome. Like that Walt Disney with the orange filter? I'd love it. <laughs> I'd love that. <clears throat> yeah. I've not seen something quite like that. Oh. Yeah, that, that's a toughie. And like look, the picture right next to that thumbnail. What's okay. this one here? <laughs> Come on. And, and I'm not showing any of these on, on, on camera because yeah. it's like we're just gonna Yeah, well, I don't wanna rip we're, <laughs> yeah. we're just gonna rip all these people that yeah. had, that had uh, Mark their photos with their with their yeah. company logo. Not cool, bro. All right. Anyway, <sighs> <clears throat> I like Harkins is like I like the yellow filter better. It's like ah, nah. Uh, I just ordered my first online coral. Thanks, guys. How does the delivery work? It's going to be mid eighties this week where I live. Oh, aren't coral you be special. safe. Mid eighties. Uh, Actually, we're getting in the fifties and sixties, and I'm pumped. It'll be fine. Uh, will the coral be safe if I don't get home from work until late at night? Ooh, well, it'd be great if like, somebody could at least bring it in for you. But uh, uh, mid eighties, where where do you live? Jeez. Um, or should I request a pickup? Requesting a pickup would actually be safer. Uh, let's see. Yeah, um, pickup would be safer unless like you can't get in. Like I don't know when the, your UPS place closes, so. Pay attention to that. But um, mid 80s is much better than low 30s. <laughs> Orange filter on my monitor. <laughs> and yes, as far as setting up uh, like special instructions for shipping, just email us. And I think this is the last coral, so. I am going to take a quick bathroom break, oh, and then uh, it's the awkward time when I it's like just me and the, yeah, and the, the, it's just it's the just crowd. you and, the, uh, and, the and, then, and then I'm like, hey guys, what's going on? <laughs> it's like, Craig, it's... what do you want to talk about? And then I sit here because it's a delay, and then they say some things, and then you come back just as I'm getting their their info. And it's like, oh well, that's right. It's all right, just... settle down, Nathan. It's my my show. <laughs> yeah. So we'll go. Yeah. We'll do just a little bit of overtime, and then we can probably grab something to eat. I don't know oh if, yeah, I don't know if kid, are some. you hungry? All right, I'll be right back. Doesn't matter, Daddy's hungry. Can Can Welkin come guest host? Yeah. Welkin, bring your Fortnite over here. Take a seat. This is more or less my little clone. I'm trying to get him into the core. Oh come on! Oh, are you being too shy? Oh, well, my little clone's not coming over. Are you sure? All right. He wanted uh, he wanted to come along because he 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 said he thinks this building's very cool. He's been here a few times now, but I, I believe his true motivation was that he'd be able to sit in a corner and play Fortnite for an hour, hour and a half. So I can't blame him either way. Actually, like I said, he's my clone. He's got my my gaming desire and competitive desire. Yeah, my kids, they're, they're, my son's six and my daughter's eight. Not quite quite old enough to, to make use of, uh, be helpful around the tank, but they're getting there. And they both have some interest. My daughter wanted to go to the coral frag swap, and so my son did also for a little bit too. So uh, I tried to get, he was too shy. He backed down. It was funny, on the way down here, he asked, he's like, is is Stan famous? <laughs> I had to explain. Well, he's he's pretty well known in like the the salt. If somebody has a saltwater aquarium with corals, that you know they they may know him. So he's not like LeBron James famous. <laughs> not 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 quite LeBron. Not yet. It's, we're, we're, his YouTube channel. But I have asked growing. for a, for a selfie occasionally. So it's just like yes, LeBron. yeah. You, well, <laughs> if you're at like a magna, yeah, you know. You, you've got you've got LeBron level, but if I'm just out in Akron, it's not quite the same. <laughs> yeah. LeBron gets more attention than I do here in Akron. So I said I said nobody at school is going to know who Than is, Wilkin. But 
<clears throat> In certain circles, Than is very well known. Go to Korean barbecue. It was delicious, yes. Have you ever been to this Korean place um, in Cuyahoga Falls here? Or actually, there, there might be a, a Korean place by you called Seoul Garden. I have not. I can't say that I have. Korean barbecue is delicious. I'm not even sure if I, I won't even know what a Korean barbecue is or tastes like. We'll have to fix that one day. It's, it's pretty good. You'll like yeah. it. Well, maybe. I don't know if you'll like it, but I, I like I, it. I think I might. I can see it. <laughs> So I'm trying to think, like, what else is going on that that might be interesting here? It's like as far as like upcoming videos and, and whatnot. So I've, I'm planning on doing his uh, his tank his tank video. I have to say, I I didn't pull out all the stops to clean it up, and it was kind of in a frag tank mode because of a couple swaps. So, you, so it's you not the greatest looking. Uh, and also because of so I've lost or I've lost or moved some colonies out because they were growing into each other or there were infections. And so, like my, I was looking the other day. So the rock work, and then there's, it's like becoming a a real long-term coral reef, and the fact that there's coral skeletons, and coral growing on top of coral on top of coral skeletons. There's layers now, like they, they do in the coral reefs over time. And I'm I'm starting to run out of room. I have to like actually, they're getting too high to put something else there, or the colonies are too big to add something to replace something I took out. I was like, it's going to take, it's going to be a project of just kind of like replacing some colonies, hauling out some previous dead colonies that have been grown on to and removing rock essentially, that, you know, so. Yeah, because uh, somebody had mentioned Rico, like the, the Rico's uh, video that I, I recently shot, it's of his new tank and so it's brand new, like all, all the rock. White like rock, nothing, yeah. Very, like, like, you know, one inch colonies everywhere. Which I think if you go to the first video you took of my tank, it's similar. Uh, you're still a little bit further along, but yeah, they're definitely thinned out. Like, like, when I say that his tank is like mature, it's been mature now for five years. Yeah. And when you see like what five years really looks like, I mean, he's probably taken, um, like, as far as like a, uh, just large giant colonies and cut them down and they regrew and he cut them down again. He's probably, you know, removed table sized acros over the years. And so when I do go back and take a look at his tank, I mean, it looks different, but it doesn't look any less full. Like it's one of those things where you can you can remove a, a beach ball sized oh, that, coral. That frog spawn that I brought, that yeah. thing was huge. <laughs> yeah, and, and the thing is like his, his tank also is, has like a ton of flow in it. And when he, um, he sold me like some euphilia that was taking up like a good portion of his tank. Not, not like all of it or anything like that, but it's, it's like a decent little corner of his tank. And he gets it into my tank and when uh, in, in my lower flow system, it looked like it took over half of my 240. Yeah, well, I, well, I was surprised when I saw it's like, it. How did that even fit in his tank to begin yeah. with? Yeah, so yeah, it just went boom. And uh, yeah, just his, his tank looks absolutely full. And it's, it's like an optical illusion because of how much stuff has been removed out of that tank over the years. Like whole other reefs have been taken yeah. out of that tank and it still looks jam packed. To the point where it's like, I mean, there's stuff growing all over the place and fighting and killing each other. And I've had a problem where I reach in there and I knock an entire colony that's you know, coming off one stem and it breaks off at the base of that one stem and falls onto the sand bed. And there's no way you you just you can't epoxy that back on. And there's no other place in the tank for it. So I, I you know I'll list it up or I'll call call you or a store and be like. I got a colony of this acro. Do you want it? Or <laughs> it's going in a five-gallon bucket, and I'm or I'm listing it online for quick pickup, price to sell, and yeah. Sometimes I, that happens. I just got to get rid of a whole colony. There's nothing else to do with it. Yeah, th that's perfect for me because um, getting like sourcing corals, guys. The difference between uh, like really inexpensive stuff that just comes, you know, f fresh off the plane, so to speak versus something that's been growing for years in a home aquarium, there's no, there's no comparison. Like, 
the, the, the health of the animal, um, the, the shorter transit times, all that stuff plays into it where like, if I could source all of my corals from people like Nathan, I would. But there's just some things that aren't really aquacultured. But yeah, it's, it, it works out really well when, when, when stuff comes from, um, comes from aquarium. So a lot of the stuff that we're trying to be um, you know, successful growing here like I hope that it has that similar like bounce back factor, you know, once once it gets into other people's aquariums. <clears throat> what if LeBron needed some coral and be a nearby supplier? <laughs> he supposedly has a reef aquarium because like one of my other friends like does work at LeBron's house, and he says that yeah, but his tank is trash. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a reef aquarium. It's no, not. Well, it, it might be because because like he, obviously like my friend has been here. He's seen the greenhouse, yeah. and I'm like I heard that, like LeBron has like a, has like, this amazing aquarium. I heard it was like two stories. He's like no, it's like it's small and it's gross. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like oh okay, I, I I guess that's that's a thing. He's not even home to do water changes anymore. He's only out in LA. You know? I'm sure that guy's never done. A water <laughs> <in his whole laughs> life. Holy hey, LeBron, life. what's your nitrate levels? <laughs> he'd be like, what? He'd, he just he'll, just he'll just like look right through you. Yeah, he wouldn't. Yeah, he wouldn't even. Yeah. So acknowledge your I, existence. I guess like, I guess when you when you're that when you're that famous, like you just can't pay attention to every human being. That I, everyone's it's, it's, everyone's yeah. saying your name. Right? Yeah, it's it's so. kind of like there's just this like this this background noise of humanity, and you just have to focus on the people you need to talk to right right then and there, which makes you seem like a enormous jerk. I'm sure. Yes, I'm sure. Yes, I <clears throat> yeah, I could see that. Yeah, I would not want to be quite that famous. That would be disappointing. Hey, sup, everyone. Hi, fan of the other guy. <laughs> sup, naked reefer. Uh, hey, Than, do live sales represent the majority of TG sales? Uh, definitely no. But live sales have this disproportionate positive effect on other sales. It, it makes no sense, okay? Like, you can do the math. Like, there's 120 something corals. Uh, their average price is $30, let's say. So, theoretically, uh, if I sold 100%, which never happens, um, we would make what, like a few thousand, right? If we sold half, we would make, you know, one to two thousand, let's say. But just this activity like drums up other sales. And it, it, it's kind of inexplicable. Like you, you would think that, um, I don't know what you would think actually, but I have noticed that like, when we do more live sales, sales of other random stuff gets like this economic stimulus boost. And it's, it just- it's some, Somehow momentum <clears throat> works. Yeah, this, this weird online momentum. I, I can't explain it, but no. It doesn't, it doesn't make it the majority, but it's, it is a nice little shot in the arm. I have to say, T, you're my favorite YouTube, and your videos have helped me as a reef. Oh, thank you, Sarah. I appreciate that. I'll try to get more videos out. I, I've been obviously very distracted as of late because of so many big projects going on here. But I definitely want to get more videos out. And like I said, uh, very high on the list is his, uh, his aquarium. I want to do a really long video about Acropora. And I want to do a, a building update when there's actually more to update. Uh, yeah. I don't want to spoil it, but there, there have been some cool little developments here. Harkins, live sale puts them on the website, that's where it counts. True, um, but strangely, uh, they'll place an order that's just not live sale at all. That's just all just items on the website. And we've looked at our, our, our website traffic, and believe it or not, it's remarkably consistent now. Like, like live sale versus no live sale, it's still pretty close, but the sales are not very close. Like it, it is bizarre behavior, but whatever, man, I'll do it. It's like it's 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 easy enough to hang out here for like a couple hours, bring Good on a time. guest occasionally. Now that like I'm kind of uh, more in the flow as far as <clears throat> shooting and producing um, the corals you see in the background, and we we throw in these little wrinkles as I kind of like figure out how to do stuff. So. The latest wrinkle is this color color temperature change. 
Um, and it's like, it's literally like I'm a DJ. I just hit play and pump my fist for two hours. It is, it is. It has changed over the years. For certain. You've definitely gotten a, a, a nice streamlined system down now. Yes, it is. Oh, it, for it's, the live it's show. actually like for the live show itself, it is a relaxing good time. So hopefully y'all enjoy it too. Uh, yeah, La last, qu last uh, few questions before we bounce on out of here and get on with the rest of our week. Um, oh, just so you know, uh, most of the, of the orders we hope to get out Monday for Delivery Tuesday, but some of them are going to have to be bumped from to Tuesday for Delivery Wednesday, just because there were some orders that had already stacked up already on Monday. So maybe like 50-50 will be going out on, on Monday for Tuesday and from Tuesday to Wednesday. Uh, if you need specific dates, let us know, email us and we'll get you on the calendar for whatever you need, okay? Let's see. <clears throat> uh, Carrie Reefer 500, really loved the video you did on Rico's Aquarium. It was flawless, you did a great job. Thanks, thanks, appreciate it. I'm glad you liked it. So the, the funny, okay, I, I gotta say it. Like, the funny thing about, about Rico's thing is like most of, the, most of the comments are, you know, overwhelmingly positive. And then, like, Rico always has like a drama element to him, which is so <laughs> hilarious. And I always, I always like make fun of him, like to his face about this, like every single time I see him. But it's like you are a drama magnet, Rico. Total drama. He's like, I just, hey, I'm just here, and people just tell me stuff. I'm like, uh huh. So should I call out Rico and like start a guest host rivalry? <laughs> you don't even need to. It'll that, it'll just start. <laughs> he, he always, he already has a target on me. <laughs> it'll already start. No, it, but it's, I, 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 I jokingly say that, but. Like, sure enough, like, the drama brigade has, like, gone into the comments there. I'm like, what the heck? Yeah. It's just a fish tank. He's not even in the video. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> they, they've, made it, they've made their way over to your channel. He's not even in the video. It's literally 100% his aquarium and me talking about it. Rico has, like, four trolls right now. Yeah. Yeah. I think the only people who care to troll me are my friends. Yeah, like I don't have outside <laughs> trolls because I'm not noteworthy. Of, you're, not, you're not dramatic I'm not enough. Yeah, I'm not worthy of trolls' attention. Ugh. Actually, I like I like being trolled. There's been a couple of comments and, and things. I commented on Welkin's name once on somebody else's. That was like a video game thing, and it, his his name comes from a video game. Mm -hmm. And I said, you Wait, know, your, your your son's name comes from a video game. Yeah. That's where I, the only place I'd ever heard the name from. Huh. And then Amber had heard it too, and she actually liked it. So, but I, somebody said that's an ugly name. <laughs> and then they started going on about it. it just, oh, I loved no. it. I loved it. Oh, no. Because I said, I was, I'm actually jealous of Welkin because he has such a cool name. I kind of like it. So, not like Nathan? <laughs> I like Nathan, but I like Welkin. It's just, yeah. Welkin, do you like your name? Yeah, he he's says nodding. yes. Yeah, yeah. He's nodding. <laughs> is the color temperature change a software effect? Yes, it is. It took me surprisingly a short amount of time to figure out how to do that. So <clears throat> I mentioned this early in the show, which probably there's a completely different crowd now watching. So it is very, very difficult to show colors of any kind um, when you're talking about like video. So like oftentimes it's very, very difficult to record it to begin with. But then um, to then go from having it in the camera, which is at a very, very, very high data rate, to then processing it into a video and then broadcasting it where it just gets totally mangled in the process. Um, a lot of what, even what I see on my screen, isn't what you guys see during the, the live broadcast. So it is really, really challenging because you go from like a 100 megabit per second um, data file to like a 9 megabit per second um, broadcast situation. And you lose 90% of the, 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 the information there. And so a lot of times what that, what that looks like is really drab coloration. So... Yeah, again, it's just it's a it's a constant struggle for me to like represent colors and then have it actually show up on your screen like that. And then also for me to to do this color shift going from 
like a daylight appearance to an actinic appearance, you can only do so much. Um, like even trying to do it as a practical effect of, of changing the lighting itself might not translate as well as what I've done. So yeah, like currently it is a it is a um, a color change software wise, but uh, it's it's pretty close on, on, on most corals, I would say. <clears throat> oh, Sinoches was gonna was gonna ask you about the sun's name. Oh yeah, it's from which, the game. Which video game? Yeah. Valkyria Kria Chronicle. Valkyria Chronicles. I think it was PlayStation Two or Three. Well, I've never heard of it. Um. It was a good game. It was actually a very good game. It's not the all your bases are belong to us era, is it? What? I'm not familiar. No. Okay, I'll have, to, I'll have to show you that meme later. Oh. <laughs> no, it was it was. It's, a it's, it's like a bad Japanese translation. So it's like all your base are belong to us. <laughs> but oh. yeah, it was a game I played. It was before we had. I don't think we were even married. We might have been married by that point. But um. Yeah, Amber heard the name. I heard the name, and we kept it in the back of our minds. That was going to be our a kid if Just we had a, we, if we ever had a son. Just in case. That was good. If Lexi would have been a boy, that would have been her name. But there you go, guys. Yeah. A little family. Re remember those video game names. A little family history. <laughs> all right. So we've gone about a, about a half hour into overtime. I hope you all have have a. A good rest of the weekend. Hope you guys enjoyed the show. Uh, thank you to the super chat. I think I only got one this time. It's two four twenty Weefer. Thank you for the ten dollars. And we're gonna get on out of here and get get some food. So I will talk to you all. Uh, next live sale is in two weeks. The twenty third, right? Twenty third. So hopefully you guys can join us for that. That'll be the everything live show. So this again was the SPS show. Uh, all the other things will be on the other one.